In this video, we'll be learning about unicellular and multicellular organisms. So we'll cover the difference between multicellular and unicellular organisms, as well as some examples of unicellular organisms and their adaptations for survival. Let's begin by looking at the difference between multicellular and unicellular organisms. First, the term multicellular just means multiple cells. So multicellular organisms are just organisms that are made up of multiple cells. This means that both animals and plants are considered multicellular because they're each made up of loads and loads of cells. On the other hand, unicellular literally means one cell. So unicellular organisms are those that only consist of a single cell. Some examples of unicellular organisms are bacteria and protozoa, like euglena and amoeba. Each of these organisms is only a single cell. If you had two cells, you'd have two organisms. Lastly, fungi are a bit of an odd case, because some fungi, like mushrooms, are multicellular. But other fungi, like yeasts, are unicellular. So now that we know what the terms multicellular and unicellular mean, let's take a closer look at some examples of unicellular organisms and their adaptations for survival. Now, we already mentioned that a couple of examples include an organism called euglena, and another one called amoeba, and both of these are usually found in water. As we've got them side by side here, let's run through the similarities and differences between their subcellular structures and how those structures help them to survive. Firstly, both organisms are surrounded by a cell membrane, which controls which substances can enter and leave the cell. Next, both cells also have a nucleus that contains their genetic information and controls the cellular activities. However, it's important to note that not all the unicellular organisms have a nucleus. For instance, bacteria don't have one. Another organelle these cells share is a contractile vacuole, which collects and expels water and in doing so, controls the volume of water in the cell, which in turn controls its shape. Now all of these subcellular structures that we've just mentioned are common to both cells, but each organism also has some unique structures too that make them really specialized. First up, euglena cells have chloroplasts, because like plants, they're able to carry out photosynthesis and make their own food. Additionally, they've also got a whip-like tail, called a flagellum which allows them to move around their watery environment. This is especially useful because it means they can move towards light, which is needed for photosynthesis. Here we can see a magnified photo of a euglena cell, showing some of these key features that make it unique. Moving on to the amoeba then, one of its distinctive characteristics is that it has an irregular cell membrane, which lets the cell change shape. This means that the amoeba can move around its environment and it can also surround and engulf food, like these particles of food here, so we can eat. Then for comparison, this is a magnified photo of an amoeba about to eat another unicellular organism. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.